We zap it, nuke it, a meal in minutes. But are we killing all the nutrients? And just how safe are those microwave bags? Some of the bags are made of plastic. Then, 99 CBD questions. What you need to know before you try or buy. There may be no proof that it is safe. Plus, Vanessa Williams joins the dish crew with five ingredient meals. The croissant breakfast bake. Coming up next. So whether it's a frozen meal or it's leftovers, we use microwaves to heat up our food fast. But does nuking kill all the nutrients in your food? Well, today, the food fact check that you need before your next meal. We're going to reveal the surprising results from our microwave experiments with the foods that you zap the most, like vegetables, including cauliflower, my favorite, and broccoli. Ooh, look how good they are. Or how about those frozen meals? They heat up in 60 seconds, so convenient. And then, yes, because you insisted, bacon. That's right, <laughs> bacon. Hey, what we found out will surprise you about that one. But join me now is Chef Danny Boom and nutritionist J.J. Smith. Yes, nutritionist chefs, <laughs> even doctors use microwaves. Yeah. So explain a little bit about this, J.J. What worries you about microwaves? What is the average, especially housemaker in America, worried about? Well, many people think that microwaves are going to transmit uh, radiation into their food, into their air, and when they hear, when they think radiation, they think it's going to increase their risk of cancer. And so a lot of them also think that the heat is going to zap out all of the nutrients. So why would a chef like you, of your caliber, I mean, consider I, I, microwaves, because I see microwaves right. in kitchens sometimes. Well, look, everybody in this room has a microwave, right? Yes. Right? Okay. Yes, we all do. Every kitchen, industrially or domestically, has a microwave because it is still the fastest way to either reheat or cook something. Mm. So let me show everyone what's really happening inside your microwave when you hit the start button, right? You push start, what happens? First, inside, there's a microwave generator, right? So when you hit start, right, boom, Right, the generator takes electricity and converts it to high-powered microwaves. Now, as your food spins around and around on the turntable, these waves bounce off the reflective metal walls and then into your food. Right, the waves excite the food molecules, and the faster those molecules vibrate, the hotter the food becomes. And before you know it, your food is ready to eat. Ah, oh. remarkable, actually. We've gotten very comfortable with this. So when it comes to your go-to foods, how do the microwave options compared to the other forms of cooking. Our first microwave experiment, we're gonna do it right now, right? What's better, microwaving or cooking your veggies at the stove? Any votes? Who likes the microwave? No. Right. Who likes to cook it on the stove? Yeah. Everyone cooks it. Susan's here, she does it, along with JJ. So how do you cook your veggies specifically? How do you do it? Well, now I always cook my vegetables, boiling water, caveman way, fire over the stove. Well, you mentioned caveman style. Older is often better. So it makes intuitive sense. But JJ, you wanted to put this to the test. Yes. Uh, okay, so this is exciting because, you know, my home can become a lab. So I wanted to experiment. What was the better way to cook vegetables? Microwaving or boiling? And it was pretty interesting what I found out. Now, I put the uh, broccoli in the microwave for the recommended amount of time, which is about two and a half minutes to five minutes. And then I put the broccoli in some water, the right amount of water. Different broccoli. Yes, different broccoli for about Just make it sure. <laughs> different broccoli for about seven to ten minutes, and it was interesting what I found. Twice as long. Twice, twice as, as long. long. It took All twice right. as long. So the veggies are ready in there. Let's pull okay. that out. All right. Let's take a look. And if you don't mind, Susan, help me do it. Just pour the water, not the broccoli. Pour the sure. water into this cup, okay? Sure. And now, when you when you microwave it, I noticed that the broccoli seems to be pretty crisp over there. Yeah, and it's pretty crisp, and it doesn't have a lot of water. Anytime you can use less water, it's the least amount of heat, and it's very quick. That's going to be the better option. So microwaving is generally going to be the better option. So what is going on here? Why is that oh. water green? See, look at here. See, therein lies the problem, oh Dr. Goodness. Oz. Why Are those the water all the nutrients? Green? Let me tell you. Whenever you boil vegetables. 
The problem is a lot of the nutrients end up in the surrounding water. So you could lose twice as much vitamin C content from the broccoli by boiling it than if you microwaved it. Is it true for cauliflower, for other vegetables? Oh, yeah. See, I, I got real excited about this experiment. I tried it with cauliflower. I tried it with spinach. And I found that for the cauliflower, it maintained the highest amount of protein content. And for the spinach, it maintained the highest amount of antioxidant content when I microwaved it. And so I found that even for cauliflower and spinach, microwaving was still the better option. So, so no more pots to wash. That That's a good like point, that. too. But, it, but <laughs> it's half the time. Half the time. And exactly. you know, d right. double the benefit here. Right. So you got a hack, though. Oh, yeah, I got a hack. Because, you know, we got to make this stuff flavorful. <laughs> so if, um, if you were to do steaming, as an example, you could actually put in about three tablespoons of water. Oh, I know okay. that, Susan. Okay, Susan's going to help us. Okay. And you can put in a little garlic. That's not much water. Flavor. Not a lot. You oh, don't need a lot no. because we're going to steam it. it See, whenever you steam, very little water is coming in contact with the vegetables. So steaming is going to be the best option. That whole butter? The, the whole, whole thing. butter. Oh, come on now. We got to make it flavorful. No, we you need have the to. Whole the butter. kids don't need it. We need the whole butter. Absolutely. What a buzzkill. <laughs> And right. then when you put the lid on, you got to put the lid on, and you yep, put it I in the microwave, you have a great steam option. And how does it taste, oh, Dr. I, I think it's to die for. It's perfect. It's crispy. Yep. It's, you it's, like it? It tastes you know not pick, healthy, but it's healthy. Take this, take this whole contraption <laughs> home with you. So Thank you very much, Thank Susan. You. All right, the next microwave experiment we want to do is what's better, microwaving or frying? So I'm going to put this to the test with what you guys are always begging me for, bacon. Bacon. So All JJ, as right. soon as JJ heard bacon, as soon as she heard bacon, she left the broccoli, <laughs> and she's right next to it. I, I just want to point that Everybody out. just rushes to bacon. the bacon. Yeah, irregardless of the topic. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> you've microwaved that. Yes. And you fried that. That's right. And as you can see, there's a bit of a color differentiation. There's a different structure to it as well. And what you see is here. So frying bacon is what you're doing is you're doing it at a high temperature and sometimes for a lengthy period of time. Got it. Now, we're going to go to the microwave version. Now, we can still fry or cook bacon in the microwave, OK? But sometimes people go, well, what about the structure? Because it gets all soggy, OK? Yeah. I'm going to show you a hack on how we can keep our bacon healthy and delicious in the microwave. All right, but before you show me the hack, I'm still gonna be sold on this. Okay. <laughs> right, I'm only bringing it up because it almost seems too good to be true that I can yeah. actually microwave bacon. Is there a calorie difference, JJ? Yeah, so let me tell you, this is where I get excited because the calorie difference is when you microwave bacon, it's about 43 calories per slice. When you pan fry it, it's about 54 calories. You get a 20% discount? Yes. Guys, I want you to stop, snap, <laughs> and share the calorie comparison <laughs> for all your bacon-loving friends. So, yes. look, look, I, I know they're going to indulge. Everybody. So, yes. give us the hack. Okay, so here's the hack. So, what we're going to do is we always cook with porcelain or ceramics. That's a plate, okay? Let's try and keep away from the plastics. Okay, then we're also going to use a glass bowl. We lay over our raw bacon. Okay, and then what we do is we place over some paper towel. Now what happens here is, is the fat then runs off as it's cooked, so it's released, but then the paper towel, what does, that does is it absorbs the remainder of the fat, but also the, the condensation. Got it, so the combination of letting the fat run off yep. and soaking up the water keeps yep. us crispy. Absolutely. You know what, they're gonna rush the stage. <laughs> here, pass that around. Pass it around. I'm not going to say anything. Just wash their faces <laughs> as we speak. All right? Let's mm -hmm. go to this next table here. Well, okay. I'm going to taste the okay. bacon. I bet that doesn't come back. Okay, it's gone already. It made it halfway around. All right, next up, frozen meals and leftovers. Mm. Do they have any less nutrients after being microwaved? Does it make a difference? Does it hurt the nutritional value? Well, you know, food companies already know that there's going to be a rigorous process by the time the food actually, the frozen meal actually ends up on your, your uh, plate for dinner. So they add in preservatives, they add in maybe a little bit more sodium, salt, just to maintain the flavor. So if you use a frozen meal, if you re reheat food, it's going to have nutritional content. So it's actually a very good option. You agree? I mean, how about reheating? Actually, you you make a beautiful fresh. meal for me. Yes. I don't want to finish the, the slab that you've given me. I take it home. Am I sacrificing by reheating it? Not really. We did one study in my test kitchen. What we actually found is you only really lose a tiny little bit. That's it? Yeah. That's All right. Up. Now, learn the healthy ways to enjoy microwave meals on DrOz.com. And do you have a favorite microwave hack? How many have hacks here? Some hacks, little ideas? Every once in a while, they'll come up. They're important. Share them. Go to the Dr. Oz Facebook group and share your favorite microwave trick or recipe. We might share them on our next show. Up next, the food fact check continues with what you need to know about the microwave in a bag trend.
I'm feeling the energy. A house that holds secrets. There's a lot of activity in the room. And a visit that finally uncovered. There's so much blood. There's more than one murder here. What really happened inside. He was watching this crying about the desecration of his body. They held him under. He was killed. This is his grave. All new eyes. That's coming up tomorrow. You won't believe it, but yes, I do have a microwave in my house. And this got me thinking. There are foods like this drain and lentil blend, right? It comes in a bag. It seems so much easier than making it in a pot. But what are you really microwaving? And is this material actually safe? Chef Danny Boom and nutritionist JJ Smith are back with what you need to know about the microwave in a bag food trend. So explain the types of foods that come in these bags now. Everything. Every convenience food possible comes in a bag. We've got a chicken dinner, we've got <laughs> lentils, we've even got umami or sugar snap peas. Everything comes in a bag because we're dying for convenience, okay? Now, mm -hmm. I appreciate the convenience of the bags, I really do, I get what you're saying, right? There's nothing easier to do than just take the bag and throw it in the microwave, but I especially like it to be you can make lentils, great source of protein, right? Yeah. 20 minutes to make lentils normally, right? Yep. Cook it on the stove and you might mess it up. This yeah. is easy, 90 seconds we made this, right? Bam, bam. And how about rice, right, brown rice? Nice. Boom, you're done. Yeah. All right, so we wanted to find out what's in these bags, because without the bags, you don't have the ability to do all this stuff, right? And it doesn't actually say it in the packaging. I looked. So my team actually called, we had to put the phone up, and we called a bunch of these food companies who sell these items. Now, a few of these companies told us some of the bags were made of plastics, like nylon or cast polypropylene, which according to the FDA are considered safe when it comes to packaging and storing. Right? But we couldn't get all the answers from companies, so we reached out to the FDA directly about the bags, and here's what they said in part. The FDA evaluates plastic under the most extreme conditions of use, including microwave use. Once they determine what might migrate from the plastic and how much gets into the food, they determine whether that level of exposure is safe. And if it's not safe, they do not permit the material's use. So once again, they're not saying nothing gets in, but they're saying the amount that does get in, they believe is safe. So Danny, what are the concerns you have about these bags now that you've heard both of our experiment yeah. plus the FDA's comment? I think the deepest part for me is, is, is there a level that creeps in? Is there still leaching? And what do we, what do we miss? Okay, still to me, the best way to cook in the microwave is with a plate, with ceramic or a porcelain and definitely using glass. That's for my personal Well, you argue that companies give you the opportunity or alternatives. You can take their product. Yeah. Right? They really do. Um, all of them, if you look at the back of the packaging, they give you an alternative cooking method. So in our family, it might reflect your experience, my wife, my wife will do that. <laughs> and I'm okay with, with the using the bags right now, yeah. from what yeah. I've learned and what I've heard. So you got it either way. But net net, I think the microwave is a good little tool I, for us all to have. Absolutely. I believe so Absolutely. Too. We'll be right back. Starting with my good friend, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, we are breaking down everything you need to know about these three letters, CBD, otherwise known as cannabidiol. It's boomed onto the market. It's become the hottest health craze in the country. Can CBD help my chronic pain? CBD make me skinny. Can CBD help CBD my arthritis? Help my indigestion? Help cancer? Boost my skin problems? Autism? Epilepsy? Help boost my energy? Can CBD help me finally get a good night's sleep? Today we're breaking down everything you need to know about these three letters, C, B, D, otherwise known as cannabidiol. This natural herb boom, it came onto the market in 2018 as the hottest health craze in the country. And now it's on its way to becoming a billion dollar industry. Now as a doctor, I'm getting more and more questions about it every day. So we're launching a season long series all about CBD to get you the answers that you're too afraid to ask. Now last year we investigated, right? We started off looking at what CBD is doing. And right here on the stage, we've, we shared with you the latest info and we'll continue to do that as the industry grows. So what's the true story behind CBD? And does it live up to its claims to relieve chronic pain and anxiety? Here today, helping us break down all you need to know about CBD is CNN's chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, always on the cutting edge. You started this movement, you personally, by starting uh, uh, all the medical community revisiting our thoughts about marijuana, medical marijuana in particular. But yeah. this is CBD, it's a little different. What c catalyzed your investigation? I, I, we believe that you know, CBD can definitely be a medicine. Uh, we've seen it. We've seen how it can help people when they did not have many options in the past. What we're seeing now is something that has gone in a different direction. Now you're seeing 
what is called the CBD craze, and I use that word very deliberately. Uh, it's everywhere. How many people understand the difference between CBD and marijuana? So marijuana is a plant, hemp is a plant. Both these plants have lots of ingredients, including CBD. Mm -hmm. Cannabis has CBD and a, a fair amount of THC. Hemp has almost all CBD and just a very small amount of THC. So the, the CBD is just a molecule, a component of, of the plant, either, either marijuana or hemp. And we've talked about medical marijuana on the show. I think most of the audience understands that. This is not medical marijuana, folks. The THC is the part that gets you high, has some t medical benefits as well, theoretically. We talk about CBD, wherever it comes from. So let's walk everyone through okay. what CBD does and, and what the benefits might be, but what are the risks also? Sure. So first off, the thing that's cool about CBD, a lot of the herbs, is these can affect the body in every place, right? It can affect your intestines, your spine, and your brain, right? And because it can affect many of our organs, because they're receptors, our body's used to seeing it in different forms, it can treat insomnia and anxiety, right? And it can also treat pain and seizures, right? Different spectrums uh, of the body's ailments can be addressed. So with so much happening in the body, how do you know if CBD is safe? Well, it's, it's interesting as well because finding out the safety is hard. We, we, we know that if you are taking CBD, if it's truly CBD, the side effects are, are really low. The concern is, are you really getting CBD? And that's a hard question to answer in today's environment. So far, most states have permitted CBD use because it seems to be safe. So it's sold all over the place. And I think that's part of the risk here because be people think it's safe, so they begin to put it everywhere, and there's various forms you can get it in. It prompts the questions we're hearing, but it also makes me concerned that there might be fraud going out there. So let's walk through what's being served with CBD. Start this with the amazing. foods. I mean, they're infusing CBD into to just about everything, as you can see here. Chocolate's a big one, the gummies, uh, the drinks. And I should point out, as you look at this table, I don't think probably in your entire career you've seen a medical product have that sort of trajectory of, of, of growth. Not even close, but yet it attracts charlatans. Right, these topical creams, toothpaste, you know, maybe they work, maybe they don't, but it's very hard to tell. I, you know, it's interesting, I spent a lot of time looking at these products, and if you look at the, the, the medical, the FDA approved CBD products, you're starting to talk about hundreds of milligrams that you're taking in a, in a single dose to get a benefit. Yeah. With these products, I mean, you know, you put some of the cream on, you're probably not even getting a milligram, or maybe just a milligram worth. So just from a dose standpoint, are you even getting enough for it to have some sort of effect in the body? Probably not. Look at these CBD liquid bottles, right? They're, they're often sold in this form. They can range from $8 to $150, depending on the quality and how concentrated the CBD is. What I was stunned, and I made a fair number of phone calls before this segment, is you're gonna have to spend real money to get enough to get benefit. And they're all unregulated, right? So the FDA, has only approved one CBD product. One medicine, it's, and it's for a very rare type of seizures, Dravet syndrome. Uh, there may be no proof that it is safe. There may be no proof that it's even what they say it is. So that, you know, th those, are, those are obviously big problems. Mm -hmm. That stated, both of us are hearing from many of you saying it's really changed our lives. So up next, we're continuing our discussion on CBD. What are the biggest risks you need to know about right now? Don't go away. We're back with our new series, 99 CBD Questions. What you need to know before buying the most popular health craze in the country right now. Now, we've discussed how many people claim it alleviates pain, anxiety, even seizures. But the question remains, is it safe? And what are the long-term effects? We're back with CNN's chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, who has been helping us break it all down, everything you need to know about CBD. Now, he went on the case in his new CNN documentary, Weed 5. Take a look. In life, everyone has days they wish they could just forget. For Jay Jenkins, that day was May 8th, 2018. You're sitting there in the passenger seat just like you are now. Right, just like I am now. My buddy asks if I'd ever tried CBD oil. So I said no, I wasn't really interested in it. You know, why would I? And he asked a few more times, and eventually I gave in and said, sure, you know, I'll try it. They drove to a convenience store and bought a CBD product labeled YOLO. YOLO meaning you only live once. Why did you do it? I didn't think there was any risk in trying it. Yeah, you know, I'd never heard about anybody having any negative effects from it. So I thought that I had nothing to lose. 
but I took two puffs off of it. Next thing I know, I'm you know, feeling crazy and not thinking straight, not being able to move. Within seconds, Jay lost consciousness and started to have frightening hallucinations. His friend drove him to Lexington Medical Center, where he then started having seizures. On the Glasgow Coma Scale, they said that I scored a three. So 15 is, is basically 15. normal, and three is brain dead, essentially. Yes, sir. Which basically means you really weren't responding, opening your eyes, speaking, doing anything. You thought you might die? Honestly, yeah. What happened to Jay is shocking. I mean, what, what made his body collapse so quickly? Well, they, they did a full you know, investigation. What they found was that he had actually taken in a, a totally synthetic substance. It was in that YOLO. They went and examined it. They went and bought it at the store, examined it, and found that it basically had nothing remotely similar to what was on the label. And what was in there was something that was incredibly toxic. So young, healthy guy, as you saw. You also saw how quickly that happened. One one puff of this stuff. So that's one risk of the CBD uh, change that's happened this year. But the CBD itself, if it's really CBD, do you think that's safe? I do, I, I really do. It doesn't, it's not psychoactive, it's the contaminated products or stuff that's not CBD at all that really seems to be uh, the problem here. I've seen CBD, I've seen it work as a medicine, I've seen it work without side effects. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's not what the public is seeing right now because the market has just become so flooded with all these different products out there. What about the issue of emotional addiction? Are you worried that a generation will think they have to be on CBDs to deal with their anxiety, their insomnia? I, you know, I, this is the issue I think I think about the most. And I think as a physician, but also as a parent, you know, on one hand, I think we are way over medicated a society as it is in the United States. I mean, we, we take so much of the world's opioids, so much of the world's anti-anxiety and antidepressants. That's a problem. On the other hand, you have a, a, a substance here, CBD, which may not have uh, as many side effects as those other medications, can be a lot cheaper and can, can make people feel better. I do worry about the emotional reliance on it. What I think is interesting is that ultimately what we may find is that a lot of the benefit, 40 to 50% of the benefit of CBD when it comes to anxiety and things like that could just be totally placebo. All right, so last year our investigation revealed that some CBD products being sold did not even have CBD in them. You've shown that some products have things you don't want in them that are labeled as CBD. And a study found that more than two-thirds of CBD products in our work were not truthful in their labeling. So if people are going to buy this, if they truly want to get involved and they want to avoid being scammed, how do they do it? And let me just punctuate what you said. They, they, they looked at this big study, 80-some products. They found 75% of them either didn't have CBD at all, had stuff, you know, these synthetics that were mixed in, or sometimes very dangerous things like what happened to Jay. There's a, something known as a certificate of analysis, COA. And if you're thinking about CBD, also remember COA. What that is is an independent laboratory inspection of the product. What is this product? What does it have in it? Mm -hmm. Every store should have this. If they don't have it, you should probably just put the money back in your pocket and walk out. To add to that, I have one other concern I want to share with everybody. The amount of CBD you're all taking worries me. Some studies have found that an adequate dosage of CBD can vary tremendously depending on the ailment. We don't know the exact dosage. No one does. We don't know what's going to need, be needed for anxiety or insomnia. And I've spoken to the biggest manufacturers in the country. And you know what they're saying? Please regulate us. Get, please, government, come. This is the industry. Yeah. Come in and tell us what the rules are because we're trying to do it the right way and we're surrounded in by three quarters of the bozos out there right. who are just trying to take people's money and they're destroying the real value of what we're trying to give to the American public. Yes, the responsible people, they welcome the regulation. There are perfectly good products out there. I don't want to give people the impression that they're all bad. There are perfectly good products out there. Unfortunately, you as a consumer don't know. You lump it in with the bad product over here. Unfortunately, we get on the news and we talk about these, these terrible stories and you think, well, I'm just going to avoid CBD altogether, understandably. Regulation would change that. All right, bottom line. If you know you've got a reputable person giving you CBD, should they be using it? You know, I don't advocate people taking things unnecessarily, but if there's a legitimate medical issue and you're being prescribed this and there is an FDA-approved drug already out there, I think it's fine. The FDA has shown that this can be a medicine. I believe, I know you have for some time, it can be a medicine. It can work when nothing else has, but our jobs make it safe. We, is, is that not a simple enough thing to ask, that if you're buying something, that it's not going to potentially kill you? 
I mean, uh, th th that, that, that is something that we, you uh, in this program, I think, will advocate for. We can do better. So because I know many of you out there are going to try CBD, right, here's my guidelines on how to protect yourself. Everyone, take your phones out right now. I'm going to put an image on the screen for all you to stop, snap, and share it with someone who you may think is considering CBD. First off, make sure you get that certificate of analysis that Sanjay mentioned, right, the COA. Number two, pay attention to the dosage. You know, don't get some tiny little dose that can make a difference. You'll think it doesn't work, and it could have worked at the right mm -hmm. dose. Number three, be cautious of big health claims. If they're going to cure cancer, listen, guys, if there was a cure for cancer, they wouldn't be selling it in a little store. Everyone would be using it, right? <laughs> and number four, understand that you are an experiment when you do this. So you got to ask yourself, did it really work for you? If you really think it did, okay, but challenge yourself to make sure that it really is having an impact so you're not wasting your money. Send us your stories. Let us know how you, the CBD affected you. We're curious as well. Dr. Gupta, I love having you on. Anytime. Thank you, sir. Sanjay finished a fantastic uh, documentary series. I showed a bit of it here. Uh, the new Weed Investigative Documentary, Part 5, dives deeply into the CBD industry. Weed 5 is airing on CNN Sunday, September 29th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And to catch up on the whole series, which is worth watching, visit go.cnn.com for episodes that are streaming right now. And make sure you tune in all season long. We'll be looking at CBD and answering all your questions as fast as you ask them. Be right back. Your angel for The Dish on Oz is back, and they're cooking up five ingredient meals that you have to see to believe. See? Mm. <laughs> More like taste. I'm making my slim down salmon. Mm. I call it this because it keeps my figure, and you know what that means at the Oz. We're all about it. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. I Thank knew you would be. <laughs> Stay tuned. If there's one thing that brings us all together, it's food. So we're calling everyone to the table to dish on everything, from the latest food hacks and trends to everyday recipes you could make for dinner tonight. It's simple, it's celebratory, and most of all, it's about having a great time in the kitchen. Oh. What is going wrong? I'm trying to help. <laughs> Let's dish. with the Dish on Oz, and today we are showing you how to make five ingredient meals that you have to see to believe. Please welcome the Emmy, Tony, and Grammy nominated star of Stage and Stove, Vanessa Williams. Yeah. And she's a top chef judge, a top selling author, and on top of everything else, she's a culinary sensation, Gail Simmons. And she's back with a whole new attitude in the kitchen, making comfort foods healthier and better, Gina Neely. And as you know, the caterers to the stars put a little bit spice and a little bit sweet and puts them together. Jamika Pessoa, come join us. Yeah, and I got a little surprise for everybody. Gonna... My daughter Daphne is joining us. She's going to come on. She's on maternity leave, as you know, but she wants to Skype in just to say hi to the foodies. Oh. Hi, Daphne. Hey, guys. Hey. Hi. I'm so... First of all, you look beautiful. <laughs> you look so good. And I, I'm Aww. so sad that I don't get to play with you in the dish kitchen today. I am home with our sweet little newborn, Gigi. And let me tell you, she is a girl after my own heart. And I think all of our hearts, she loves to eat. Oh, yeah. Um, but I have to tell you, I'm so excited for the theme of today's show because I know you guys are cooking up delicious five-ingredient meals, a.k.a. mom's best friend. It keeps it simple and delicious in the kitchen. So I'm going to be paying close attention here. Uh, Vanessa, what are you guys cooking up today? Well, it's a five-ingredient salmon dish that may help you slim down, like Ooh. we all need oh, to. I need that. Oh, want to. <laughs> yeah. And uh, a croissant ham and cheese breakfast bake that's so hot and bubbly, you'll jump out of bed. What? <laughs> that means something. <laughs> that means something. <laughs> Whoa, they look delicious. They sound amazing. All right, send me some leftovers, please. I, I promise Absolutely. I'll bring some over to your house. All right, Vanessa, can I ask a quick question? The way you described that got me thinking. Are people surprised that you're such a big time cook? I think they're surprised. I, I was surprised. Yeah, and yeah. then when you taste it, then you're. I was like, she's my girlfriend. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> forever, forever, forever. <laughs> Good. Forever. So, Gail, you got to be harsh sometimes. I, I like. <laughs> the, seriously, I watch you. It's intimidating. Because you got to. all bark, no bite. Oh please, I don't Let know if that's know that. true. We're it's gonna those find out. ones that fool you. <laughs> it's, it is, it's, and you're not quiet. No. But, but have you ever? burnt a dish. I'm just curious about your mistakes. What is the, what is mean, the top chef two, judge Two wrong? weeks ago, um, I was making dinner for friends at home. I got this new grill. I was so excited to use it. 
I got to talking, maybe drinking a little wine. Oh, maybe. maybe. And yeah. the chicken thighs were not exactly as I'd planned, let's just <laughs> say. So all the time. Let me tell you, reality TV is different than reality. Yes, yes. It happens. Re reality that is reality. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's and for you, sure. You know, we all know you for the Food Network days when you were just cooking up a storm, making it different. But Five ingredients simplifies things, and you think yes. that's pretty important. Why is it so important to be simple when you're cooking? You know, I think because we can put too many things and too much. When, when a dish is overwhelming, like eight, nine ingredients, you're like, do I have this, do I have that? But everybody has these basic, simple five ingredients, and it doesn't seem overwhelming at all. It's a lot lighter. I wanted my life to be lighter. I want to be lighter, so I lighten things up. Oh. Yeah, we have to I lighten like it. it up. <laughs> Don't need all that in the kitchen, honey. Lighten it up. Turn there the music go. up. Crank up the wine. Lighten it up. <laughs> if you want to see how Gina lights it up, George, stay with us, because up next, we are cooking, starting with that breakfast bake we promised. Yes. Stay with us. Mm. Of the dish on Oz, and today's show is all about the number five. Five ingredient meals that will simple, but they're gonna steal the show. So I'm going to the audience to deliver some coffee that will go perfectly with the breakfast bake you're about to make. Vanessa, what do you got? Well, let's get started with the croissant breakfast bake. <laughs> croissant. Right, five ingredients with mm -hmm. the recipes: <laughs> croissants, mm -hmm. ham, cheese, egg, and milk. Oh, beautiful. Kick it off oh, for us. Every, right. every breakfast should start out this with simple. This All right, so we're starting with store bought croissants that we've sliced and put inside the bacon dish. Just lay flat. And I am topping with some Black Forest ham. Mm. Of course. Come on. Of course. Mm. All right, so I've got the layers down, and I'm going to hand it off to Gail. Beautiful job. Top it off for me, please. What do you have? So I'm going to just sprinkle some cheese right on top. Now, there's going to be two layers of cheese because. Cheese. It should be. You, you know, this is the key process. to a great grilled cheese, is grating the cheese. Mm. It melts it much faster. It just it melts does. faster yes. and more evenly. You get about half the amount on here, and then you top it. I'm going to put some cheese on at the end. Okay, okay. so let's top it with uh, croissants. Now, I am, my, my, my weakness is baked goods. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and I love a good croissant. So if you, don't, if you don't go to the market and get them fresh, you can Tiny. also buy them and put them in the freezer. That's croissants of the day. Thank you. Is that they good? And buttery too? Oh, I, so I, they're really not my friend. I just kind of take them in every now and then. Okay, well then you take these in right here and what are you going to do with them? So I'm going to add in some eggs. Okay. I'm going to add in some whole milk. I'm going to mix it together to give it a more custardy kind of smoothness to it. Nice. To help it bind together. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add in this all Everything bagel seasoning. Now I've never had this. You guys say it's oh, amazing. Oh, y'all know about it. Y'all know about it. Everything New York staple. Yeah. New York's everything. Well, bagel? I'm a Southern girl, so let's not be. All right. Are we only everybody's young. Everybody, we'll take, the everybody just take a deep breath. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. She's a Southern girl. Okay. All right. What do you think? It's like what? The Salty, savory. Mm -hmm. It's everything. Well-rounded. It's like almost like a. <laughs> it's the bagel without the bagel. We That's like what it is, right? <laughs> this seasoning is good on everything. It's one of those things that if you have oh it in my your God. Pantry, what it goes in eggs, it goes on roasted everything. veggies. Like and it's going everything. to Memphis, Tennessee. There we go. All right. How about that, ladies? Right. So you got to okay, pour so that right on top there. I, and then this goes after you pour right. it, it goes in the oven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. Mm. And it's Ooh. all going to get in all the nooks and crannies. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. 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 Look at that. 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 Yeah. Do you put more cheese on top? Yes. Oh, you're ready oh, wait. to go. Yes, you do. And, you know what, and I'm just like dragging <laughs> stuff. Wait, wait let's get all about this. Let you me get all that. the night before, y'all, and you can let oh. it sit, and it all just kind of soaks up all oh, that boy. egg. Right. Oh, so then you can sleep Lovely. in later. Oh, yes, definitely. It's sort of like yes. a savory bread pudding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't be cute with the cheese, Such a good, such a good right. Yeah, yeah. Just put it in there, yeah. cute. Come on. There we go. good in there, too. All right, so we're going to put this in the oven? Put this down for me, Vanessa. Here, I'm going to help I'm just a little short lady. All right, big oven. Well, while they're back there, can we kind of look at this delicious Thank you. Thing. Okay, man. That's while y'all dawdle back like there, we're gonna scoot, scoot, scoot. Don't you just love the TV world when everything's scoot, already scoot, ready to go? Uh, oh, perfection. Yes. Perfection. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Look shimmy. at that ooey, gooey, gooey yes. Yum, yum, yum. Give it this I'm going slow here. Pull. Come on, girl. Here you go. Ready? This is the oh. part that you're waiting for. When you bring this to the table for breakfast, and you're like, mmm. Oh, everybody's oh, like, oh my goodness. Oh, there yeah. we go. Can I play? Can I play? Oh my God. So, so you keep so running good. off, you keep running away. 
I was hoping. I was captivating right. the audience. Okay, just get in this there. This is how you... Is it our house? This is no. what we do. Yes. There we go. Oh. You know, I'm, I'm taking one to Daphne, but I can guarantee she wanted me to get close to this. The, the grandkids <laughs> oh won't give us a shot. Oh, my God. It's apart. Mm. This I is a, this, this is so good. Like, this is like this, this is, is amazing. Really, wow! Especially if you're entertaining and you want to be there for your, your mm. guests. You don't be in the kitchen yeah. all the time for yep. brunch. To serve like just brunch. just lay it right out with Absolutely. some mimosas and go at it. It's Make a party it in, in your mouth. It's Absolutely. a party in your mouth. Yes, yeah, a party right, in your mouth. Coming up, I'm gonna give you five reasons you won't want to miss the recipe coming up. Number one, Woo! it's delicious. Number two, healthy. Number three, affordable. Fourth, easy to make. And five, it may help you. Listen carefully, lose weight. I'm in. Yes. Don't miss it. There you go. I'm feeling the energy. A house that holds secrets. There's a lot of activity in the room. And a visit that finally uncovered. There's so much blood. What really happened inside. He was killed. They held him under. Oh. This is his grave. That's coming up tomorrow. The five ingredient meals that you have to see to believe. Now, after losing 30 pounds and keeping it off, which is a big deal, Gina Neely says five is all you need. So I trust her. Now, her new simple and clean approach cooking has changed everything. Can I show these photos? It's okay? All right. Yes, okay. All right. So I will show you a before and an after photo. Wow. That's right. Wow. So, Gina, when you look at the picture on the left there, what do you see? What's going through your mind? Who's, how is that woman different from the woman standing next to me right now? Gosh, you know, just looking at it, it kind of reminds me of sadness, really, um, overwhelmness. Why were you sad? Just the transition I was in and going through. And then to see this person, it's sort of like, it's okay to feel like you can come out of anything and get through it and just embrace it. Well, I'm, embrace sorry. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's, I'm proud of you for what you've done. One of the most difficult things is to change anyway, but the kind of change you made was massive. Massive. Well, and publicly. And publicly, of yeah. course. You don't have any choice about that. I know. <laughs> I know. So but that's you, okay. We're moving to a lighter place. We, now, here's the good thing for me. Yeah. You got newfound freedom and yes. new outlook on life. Yes. How has that changed the way you, you cook it? The way you're changing the way we're going to think about food? Well, I think for the most part, a lot of times I ate through my sadness. You know, food becomes like a crutch for some people. And I just kept eating and eating and not even really realizing that I was expanding as I was eating and not really feeling good. So how do you, I had to start figuring out how do I put my pieces back together? And I had to get control of my life and that's when I started exercising and changing my diet and you know, just walking myself out of my own darkness and turning on the light. We were talking a little last night and I appreciate you spending time with me. And it, it seemed like you're looking for love in the wrong places, but yeah. you found love in God. Absolutely. And I'd love if you could share a little bit about your spiritual thoughts. Man, I tell you, if it wasn't for God, I don't even think I would be standing here today. Honestly. And I tell you, he, um, he is, I tell people all the time, if you just believe and stand on God's promise, that is the real MVP. And I thank God every day. And so I try to be an inspiration to people who don't know that, who don't, who can't understand or can't figure a way out. I try to show them this little light here. Look at me. You can get out. You can, you, you can change that. You just got to want to change it. And you have to fight it every day because depression is something that you stay in the dark and the darkness becomes comfortable. It's isolating. It wanted me as a captive. I said, no, no, that's not what my God wants for me. And that that's beautiful. Nice. You're right. Yeah. Depression gets comfortable. Isn't that yeah. cool? Yeah. What was it? The reason it's the dish is because yeah. we dish on stuff that matters. But yeah. ultimately, we're here for each other. Amen. And we teach. So God bless you, you for sharing you. that. I know it took a lot. <laughs> what you've done and where are you going to go? Yeah. All right, now, what are you going to make for us? So I'm going to make a five-ingredient salmon situation. Okay. Oh, a salmon situation? Yeah, <laughs> just five ingredients. <laughs> but first stop, I got to put some olive oil in here. Well, and now, listen, but I got to put you to work, and I know you like oh. the one off. Hold on. Hold on, tiger. I just want the food. Easy, tiger. <laughs> you just, I bet your wife, I bet she's skinny because she got to run after you all the time. Gosh. She does run after me, but she usually just catches me quickly. She's very fast. Mm, I like that. <laughs> so we're going to shuck some corn. All right. Can you do that for me? I'm good at that. You got it? Right. This feels like home. Let's get it. Where Enjoy is it? Enjoy yourselves. I'm okay. going, I'm going. You got it? Okay. All right. All right. You just put him to work. I, I have that. to. I have to. And I need it. Let me, hold on. Let me 
me just get a sip. Do we need yeah. a, I, just need, I, I just need a sip after that testimony. I, I got a testimony. All right, I don't know if we should testify and then drink wine. Maybe it's church. I don't know. God did. Anyway. God did. Anyway. I say to you, Gina. Anyway. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank now, you, take you. a sip of wine, and then I need you to explain to us, dish the details on yeah. this salmon situation. You talk about this slim down salmon. Okay. Yes. Can you do that for us? You know, salmon is full of omega 3s, and I love salmon, but people cook salmon the same way, either yes. wood grill or just maybe just sauteing it, but I want to kind of give it a southwestern feel to it. So Ooh, I want to add nice. some black beans, some okay. corn. <laughs> and the great thing about it is it's cooking on foil, so that's what, no cleanup. Toss it right out. Love it. Got that going? Mm -hmm. Perfect, yeah, I got big. you. I okay, got you. I'm gonna add in a can of black beans. Black beans are filled with antioxidants. I've fallen in love with them. You rinse them off, drain them, and stick them right in here. Okay. okay. And okay. you're gonna chop up for me, thank you for some scallions oh, and yes. some chop diced tomatoes. Over here. Mm -hmm. I love okay. that you're using these grape tomatoes, by the way. Absolutely. Because all year round, these are really much the only tomato across the country you can get that have flavor, that hold up when you're cooking them, burst I know. into juice. So yeah. the grapes are the way to now, go. Grape. While they're dishing on tomatoes, I wanna get up in your dish. Who are you dating, Miss Gina? You put, you, yes, tell us. You got a boo in the life? What you doing over there? See, that's huh? how I got in trouble last time, having my boo out in the life. <laughs> I normally don't cook for men because I think men get a little turned on because they saw me cooking in the kitchen. So how long oh. does it take before you cook for them? I don't, they take me out. No, oh. it's about wine and dining okay. machine. Right. I've all right. cooked all, I'm gonna cook. I'm okay. just sorry, right. but I'm oh, done. the corn is back. Oh my God, the <laughs> corn made it. Oh. And, and it, I was thinking you we were going to have this corn, actually. Oh. No, I actually shucked it. I ate a couple, but I also got some of the curls off. <laughs> oh, thank you. Tomatoes. Oh, my yes, yes, such yes, a cheese yes. plate. And my tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. There you are, my dear. And my green onions. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. Got you, got you. Thank you. Mm, this smells, smells really, very really colorful good. too. And that's what I love about yeah. it because salmon is kind of bland looking otherwise. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this gives it a little color. Yeah. So you look at it because food should be visually into the eye mm -hmm. before it comes to the stomach yeah. and the mouth. Yes. Eat it up and then get it up. <laughs> Come on. Delicious. I just want to spoon it on here. Oh, but I want it nice and soft. Oh, there we go. Oh, I know. It's all about gorgeous. the presentation. You're really teasing us with this slow pour. You know that, right? There we go. That looks delicious. so beautiful, Gina. Oh and my so gosh. fresh. Like, I that know. is to me what It's like out of the garden. Feeling. Does it yes. not look like out of the garden? You lime here? You some lime over here? Lime We're going to put the lime on top on a zest it and just open the flavors up. up. Nice. Yeah. All right. Platter Just ready, a little ladies. squeeze. Do that. Can I do Thank that for you? Thank you. I see yeah. a wee family <laughs> stuff. Just, just dig in. Dig in. All right. Just let's go. Just dig in. Yes. Just dig in. Can you reach? Pretty right there. Come on, Lily. It tastes as fresh as it looks. Yeah. Yeah. It's so warm. Vanessa, are you happy with this result? It's delicious. Top chef, mm -hmm. judge this for yeah. me. Mm -hmm. mm. That's all I need. Fresh, that. simple, letting the ingredients speak for themselves. Perfectly cooked. And look how beautiful that is. Yeah. That's a oh, great yeah. platter for dinner, for friends over, mm -hmm. glass of wine, happy hour, hanging out by yourself and having a glass of wine there on the go. sofa with your feet up. Enough and all you're doing that. is perfect. Nice there seat, Doc. You can find the recipe on DrOz.com slash the dish and all of our shareable picks and step-by-steps on Instagram at the dish on Oz. I'll see you next time. We're done. All right. Bye, guys.